All the content contained in this webcast is for informational purposes only. The investments and strategies contained in this webcast may not be suitable for you. Please consult your own independent financial advisor before making any investment or trading decisions. Good morning, traders and investors around the world, and welcome to Tuesday's edition of PremarketInfo.com, where we prepare you for the most important hour of the day, the first hour. Well, Dennis, a uh, relatively quiet range overnight, five points, uh, not able to get over uh, the intraday high from yesterday, and just kind of hanging out above settlement. Ridiculously quiet day again after following a quiet day yesterday, too, Joel. I guess we're getting a couple days of consolidation. This market's taking a breather, trying to decide if it wants to move higher or if this whole 1,400 area is going to hold and we're going to start to break down. And keep in mind, we have the unemployment numbers coming out on Friday, so gives everyone an excuse to do nothing till Friday. <laughs> uh, look, looking at the S and P's, though, Dennis, uh, Monday's Globex high and Friday's high right up there at the fourteen oh three level. Uh, once we clear that, it'll be on our way up to uh, the new highs at fourteen nineteen seventy five. And uh, just have to keep an eye on settlement here. Our swing area, uh, th uh, thirteen ninety three fifty. Uh, moving on to some of the stocks in the news today, uh, we haven't talked about Apple since yesterday, Dennis. Quite a <laughs> breakdown through the 600. Joel, this thing broke down through the 600, really didn't look back. It was one stock that did have quite a bit of action yesterday. I'll bring up a daily for you there just to show you. Uh, we got, it opened below 600 yesterday. It uh, really never sniffed even back up into that area, the high yesterday. Uh, getting as high, well, I can't really grab it there, 598, right around 598 it topped out at anyways. But moving down um, and obviously breaking all the way down through the 590s, all the way down to 583. Joe, I remember that 578 number you used to talk about. I wonder if we'll eventually make a run for that number again. What do you think? Uh I think a lot of the new uh, the, there's a lot of negative news that New York Times um, op-ed about them avoiding taxes. It just there just was a negative tone to the stock yesterday. It was holding above that 600 level. Uh, really, the main number I'm keeping an eye on the downside, Dennis, is 567.69. Uh, that was the high on the day before it gapped up from earnings. Uh, really, this whole 570 to 600 level, there's really not any good numbers. You do have. 598.40, which was uh, Monday sign, the gap to Friday's low. So the stock's just trying to f just figure out what to do after that blockbuster earnings report. But uh, that 600 is going to be hard to get through. The more times we dip under it, Dennis, the more resistance uh, that that number is going to be. I, uh, just a couple other stocks. I just want to stay with that one, in... Joel. Just I just want to stay with okay. that one just for a second. Um, yeah, and I, okay. I wanted to expand on that point. That 600 is starting to become a really critical level here. If we were to get back up there, I would bet I would bet we'd be met with a lot of resistance in that area. I don't think we're going to get that high, though. I think the stock had a key breakdown yesterday. It wouldn't surprise me. You know how I'm a fan of my two-day moves here. We had a pretty big down move yesterday. It wouldn't surprise me. We're getting a nice little bounce this morning, and sometimes that's the worst things for stocks if they get that early pre-market bounce because everybody juices up and says, oh, I can get out of here and get another three, four bucks out of it. I'm going to dump it at the open, and you get everybody dumping together, and what it can do is maybe in the first 20 or 30 minutes really put pressure on the stock. So I'm not saying it's going to do that, but it wouldn't surprise me if the stock really had another breakdown day yesterday and it ended up falling another 10 or 12 bucks. So keep an eye. That's just my opinion. Um, I think, you know, it's pretty open all the way down to that number that Joel was talking about, that 567. I don't think it's going to fall 20 bucks today from where it is now, but wouldn't surprise me if uh, there was some continued weakness in this issue. Okay, and Dennis, just uh, that call, just could give our folks a good number. Uh, Five eighty-eight fifty-six uh, was the high in the pre-market. Um, I had 588.46 uh, is a major swing number. So if you want to take a shot at it in the 588 levels, that should be good resistance. Uh, now moving on to the big oils, Dennis. Uh, this could be key to the market breaking out to new highs. Uh, starting with Exxon Mobil, you're getting uh, the Great Wall of China here uh, in the high 86s. We did sneak over 87.18 uh, four days ago. It just seems like it's really bumping its up head against this 87 uh, below the 52-week high. And then you take a look at Chevron Corporation. I mean, how many times are you going to see Chevron Corporation make three highs within 20 cents, Dennis? Yeah, you're right. There are some highs forming there, too. Some of these stocks are starting to look a little bit toppy. 
Um, I still just think, you know, it's this rest period where, you know, we could end up, uh, I'm, I'm, it's kind of a coin flip here. You're right at this critical 1400 area, and you're right at some critical resistance on a lot of individual stocks here. So if you can get that upbreak, and like you were even saying in your weekly comments earlier in the week, if you can start breaking above that 1403, a lot of these other stocks would probably take out some of their individual resistance levels too. But until that happens, um, there's definitely some resistance starting to form here. And if it doesn't happen anytime, you know, in the near future, future, these stocks could start drifting lower here again. Okay, uh, earnings down on Pfizer today, Dennis. Uh, the street's a little bit disappointed. Pfizer's down a bit here, Joel. It's not getting hit too bad. A little bit of lowered guidance in there, I think, setting it down. It's trading 22.66 right now. So uh, it's down at 25 cents. So not a real crazy move. If you look down here from a few days ago, we had multiple lows in this 22.35 area down to 22.20. There was about four days in a row where we uh, the bottoms were all in that area. I think if it really went to sell off mode, I think it would probably find some support there. It's also an uptrend going there, so you could argue that you know maybe it'd find some support even in the 2250 area. But uh, th these things can be funny though. Once you know the regular session opens and it gets a little bit more volume, usually the first 10 or 15 minutes is a pretty good tell. So I'd watch that first 10 or 15 minutes of action and then try to trade you know maybe with the flow there. Um, keep an eye on 2280. Uh, that was uh, yesterday's low, and it's also been the high in the pre-market. So that will be uh, that'll be our swing number. Uh, spent a couple days uh, hitting over 23. Only could, did settle above it twice. So now with uh, the stock trading lower, that 23 is going to be uh, just like that 600 number in Apple. Uh, a Michigan stock in the news, not delivering good results. Domino's Pizza. Domino's Pizza. It had a heck of a run-up into the report uh, for four days. Basically, we ran straight up. Uh, if we look back, we were at 34.20 just uh, five trading sessions ago. Straight up to 37.81, this whole 38 resistance area. Obviously, uh, the earnings aren't good. It's giving back most of that run today trading at 35.15 I think it was trading lower a little bit earlier Joel maybe Joel can get us the pre-market low I think it got down to 34 bucks though which would coincide pretty closely with that low that we've seen at 34.20 so maybe that's where you do get some initial support but it is bouncing here a bit Joel from those lows yeah there was a bounce uh, 250 shares traded at 34 a uh, little bit more volume at 34 and a quarter uh, Dennis, you're exactly right. That coincides with the 34.20 low. Uh, that was the that was the low before you had this uh, five-day march up. So as long as Domino's holds above 34, I think we're looking okay. Uh, below that, you're looking at uh, a pretty good move down to 32.28. Then you have a gap below that. Uh, only 13,000 shares though is traded in the pre-market, Dennis. Since we hit that 34 low. It's kind of been on a steady move up, 3550s where it looks like someone uh, someone's stepping in here. So use 3550 as your swing number. If it really goes into the rally mode, uh, 3680 was yesterday's low, but doesn't look like we're going to get there. Avon Products reported here too, Joel, symbol AVP. Uh, stock was quiet, uh, but starting to move down here just a little bit. 2160 is where it's settled. Um, it's trading 21 right now. This is a critical area. Those 2145 is a low, and you had that gap up back in late March where the stock gapped up from 19 and a half up to 2175. I can't remember what the news was on that. Maybe you can remember. Yeah, that the, the company that they were trying to buy was going to try and buy them. Oh, okay, so that's what the deal was, and obviously you had that gap up day. Now you know it's starting to break through into this whole gap area and the why gaps are critical and we should explain this to our listeners is that really you know when you see a gap in the chart it's just no reference points in there so technical traders are somewhat skeptical to put even orders out there which makes the book thinner as it moves up and down through that area so basically the trade is when it's stuck and you know has a gap in the chart if it starts to trade in that area again it can move through that gap a little bit easier than it could if there was multiple lows or multiple highs or or in in that same area so since there is that gap in the chart, we get somewhat concerned if it starts trading 21. There's really no reference points until down to this 19, uh, well, from what the area where it gapped was 1942. You did have a high back in February at 1982, which would be a reference point. So the only thing you can really use is like maybe some whole numbers or something. But it's a little bit scary when it starts to trade through there because it could cut through there very quickly. Like this thing could be at 20 bucks in a hurry if it really started to get some selling pressure in it. 
yeah, I don't know if the deal's been pulled off the table or whatnot, but uh, yeah, I have to agree with you, Dennis. This, uh, just above this 21 area, you've had multiple lows since there's been that merger talk. Uh, 2150, 2145, that's the area you got to keep an eye on. Um, in the pre-market, Avon Products is traded down. Well, it's really consolidating here at 2150, Dennis. Holy mackerel. Someone obviously is trying. Oh, and then you got the printed 21. Yeah, so. we got to start trading 21 here. Yeah, I got to trade 21. I, I mean, you know, when there's rumors out there, it's kind of hard to, you know, be sure in these kind of things. Uh, we did have a little bit more of an opinion, Dennis, back in March when that news came out and it was trading up at 23, 24 bucks. Uh, kind of similar to the way that Barnes and Noble was trading at 28 bucks in the pre-market stock, you know, practically doubling on a 300 million dollar investment. So, when you get news like this, the stocks uh, about a potential takeover, and then the takeover possibility fades away. You just got to look out. I mean, the stock could go back down to 17 bucks. Yeah, definitely uh, some concern that there's that kind of gap in that chart, though. So I don't know if I'd be a buyer at 21. Uh, a couple other little ones we want to just talk about and highlight. ADP, uh, Automated data, data Processing, hasn't really had much action here this morning, but had, did report earnings. 55.70 is trading up $0.08 cents right now on 100 shares. So there's really, you know, it's hard to say where this thing's going. You did have multiple tops here. If we go back into late February, early April there, Joel, at 56.19 and 56. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 5616. So if it is to go in a rally mode and get up 60 cents, I think it'll run into a little bit of trouble there. And then you have the 52 week high above there if it really went to high rally mode at 5710. Yeah, Dennis, you did your homework there. Uh, this is not a really heavily traded issue. So, and so 100 shares in the pre market doesn't mean much. 56, is there anything in the book there, Dennis? Can you uh, see? No, I, and I don't see. And it's not listed on New York, so you don't get that open book data either, which is. Uh, makes it a little bit. You know, I know it throws you off when you see the three symbols, but it's actually not a New York listing, so I don't have any open book data there for you on that one. Okay. Well, yeah. Keep an eye on 56. Uh, you've had a major string here. One, two, three, four. You know, you had a five higher lows, and then you had a, um, a lower low yesterday. So keep an eye on this 55.43 level. If we break down there. Um, ADP could be heading to the 55 level, and 56 is major resistance. Uh, just one other one, small one. Hasn't even traded here yet, but fresh Del Monte produce for you food people who like to trade the food stocks. FDP has reported earnings this morning. It is bid up a penny, 23.18, but the best offer is up at 24 and a quarter. Uh, I don't know if there's that much to say about this. It's obviously made a nice base in the low 22s. If it was going to sell off mode, I think you'd definitely find some support there. But this could be muted action here too. Although I would like to note we did move very quickly down from that 25 and a half area down through 23 in late February. So stocks obviously move down quickly, can move up quickly as well. So not a lot of resistance on this one really in the chart, Joel. Yeah, I like. I mean, it busted above 23 yesterday, Dennis. Major breakout for uh, Del Monte Produce here. So, um, 23 bucks would be a key level if it pulls back there. It's definitely going to be initial support. And then you're right, Dennis. It had this monstrous day back in uh, on uh, February 28th and went from 24.92 to 22.60. And um, even though it wasn't a gap, it's that you know the kind of area where. You know, you're not going to see a lot of a lot of size bids or offers, but nor is there ever a lot of size in uh, Del Monte just, Produce. Just got some news coming out on AT and T, um, and, and I don't see actually what it is here, but the stock's New York Post reporting something. Um, for oh, another highly reliable source. Well, I, I, I <laughs> actually, I don't see the headline there, but the stock is selling off a bit. So let's just give a quick technical on AT&T, and we're going to have to close up the show. This $33 buck area, I've actually got a position on this one, too, so I should limit my trading comments, but the $33 area has provided some resistance. All right, well, Dennis, this is one that you, you read my weekly comments. Uh, I really was a uh, twisted sister on. I got bearish after it went ex dividend. Uh, came out with some marvelous earnings. Uh, Thirty-two ninety-five was Monday's high. Uh, September of oh eight high at thirty-three fifteen. We got to keep an eye on. Uh, not sure what the news is, folks, but a uh, major, major support at thirty-two forty-five to fifty-two Friday and Monday's low. So if it can't hold that level, get out of the way. So that's our show for today, folks, and we'll be back with you tomorrow.